Hey, it's Clay at ClayTrader.com. This will be my top 10 stocks as we head into Monday, May 2nd. This will be a technical analysis breakdown. So if you are somebody that uses charts within your trading, or maybe you're just interested in learning more about charts and how they can be used to help make good decisions as a trader, this will be a video for you. Before I get to the watch list, first want to personally invite you to get signed up for this free live online class that I'm offering next week. So if you like what you see as I go through the video and you want to learn more about this tool, how it can, how it should be used to help build consistency as a trader, then certainly get signed up for the free class. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a link down in the description box. If you're watching at my site, there's an area right there on the webpage you can click to get signed up. So again, if you like what you see, certainly get signed up for the free class. A couple of quick clarification points. First off, the market is still open for a little bit of time. So that number over here is still changing around. So oops, <laughs> circled the wrong one. Can you tell it's Friday? Right there, that number is still changing around. The candlestick is still moving, uh, but I like to do these videos when the market's still open for a small amount of time because sometimes we can capture some really interesting late day price movement. Uh, but everything I still talk about will still be relevant as we head into Monday. And then also I'll be using the 30 minute time frame. So for you beginners out there, what that means is that each one of these candlesticks as they're called represents 30 minutes worth of time. So stock number one here, ticker symbol RDBX. I've done this one several times, but uh, kind of, I don't want to say fell off the map, but it did a little bit. Cause I mean, you look at just how much volume disappeared over the past couple of days. And then all of a sudden today, volume came back, uh, pouring back in and the price reacted very nicely with it. Uh, so I'm sure there's gonna be plenty of eyeballs watching this one next week. And a couple of key levels here to watch from the support standpoint, first off. So if you'd like to play more so pullbacks, interesting level in my mind, at least is right down there around that $5 mark. And then as far as resistances are concerned, nothing fancy or complicated at all. Literally just a question of, okay, well, where did the party stop today? And it finally stopped right up there at $6.15. So 615 with that initial level. And then from just more so kind of a general pattern perspective, and I'll make this all the same color. Can we have a resistance? We have our support. We have the big momentum move right there. So you could classify this as a bull flag pattern. So if you like to play bull flags, if you like to play stocks down below, uh, you know, the, the $10 mark, then I would certainly get this one on your watch list to keep an eye on. Next one, VAXX, what a monster mover this thing was today. Huge move, got the pullback. So now there's a very well-defined pattern here. And I like well-defined patterns because that means a lot of people are watching them. And when a lot of people are watching them around the world, call it a self-fulfilling prophecy, call it whatever you want, it can certainly produce some very dynamic movements. So nothing's guaranteed, uh, but like I said, is it valid? Is it plausible to think that you know breakouts could pick up momentum because it's just simply breaking an, you know, an area on the chart? Absolutely, so what is that area on this one? And I think people around the world have drawn that trend line right there. They're noticing that this thing has been you know pulling back here a little bit. And again, no such thing as a guarantee, but is it valid? Is it plausible to think? that if the price can push up through that trend line, that that break right there could very well create another surge of buying to the upside. Yes, not a guaranteed thought, but by no means is that some sort of random thought process to have. So if you like to play you know, pattern breakouts, then you wanna keep a close eye on that. Uh, again, for those of you that like to play pullbacks, interesting pullback area right here around $6.50. And then once again, to keep this all the same color. So again, we have our resistance, we have our support. You have the momentum move right here. This one be a little different. We'll put our golf hole down here. This would be known as a bull pennant pattern. Um, so again, bull pennant pattern. If you like to play those, like to play stocks down below $10, here you go. Next one, CYN. I've been doing this one quite a while and it just kind of sound like a broken, or I should say at least feel like a broken record, higher highs and higher lows. It seems like that's all I say for this one. And I'm sure assuming you're along and bullish, nobody uh, is complaining about that. Uh, but once again, just to give up more content, I mean, check this thing out. Uh, you know, first started doing this, and I think back here when it first gapped up, and you know that was down there around two dollars, now up over five dollars. So this has been a very impressive mover, very nice trend. So let's just map out some of the newer levels, and from a support standpoint, current level of support that I'd keep an eye on with any sort of pullback gonna be right there around that former resistance level. So let me change this to green actually to represent an area of support. And that area sits down there right around, let's call it $4.50, $4.60, give or take. As far as levels of resistance are concerned, what I'm gonna do is actually change to the daily time frame here, meaning each one of these represents one day. And I need to do this because we're going way back into the chart's history to figure out where some of these next potential resistance levels are at. With the next key level of resistance, whoops, let me try that again, work on my, there we go. Gonna be right up there around $6 and about 40 cents, so 640 next key level. And this is going from uh, to way back here in November of 2021. So we're talking about multiple months ago, but that will be the next key level. But overall, just an, an absolutely monster move today, big volume. So I'm sure there's gonna be plenty of eyeballs watching it next week to see if this momentum can continue. So let's see what happens with it. 
We are now back on the 30 minute time frame and looking here at AMC. And this will mean a tad bit more to those of you that watched the video previously. But if you did, then hopefully you remember me talking about this red line up here at the $16 mark, because you can see that today, the power of charts price attempted to make a move up, got up through that purple line. But as I talked about in the previous video, just because you get above that purple line, which is that 50 period moving average, you, you still got to be a bit skeptical because you still have 16. And unfortunately, assuming you're bullish, the bears are happy about it. But assuming you're bullish, uh, you know, the, the price did get through the purple line 50 period, but then ultimately got rejected right back down. Now, the good news here. So if you want to try to look at the glasses being half full, at least the price did still honor and respect this area of support down there. Again, a, a previous level that I talked about in another video. So, I mean, it would have been a lot worse if the price had gotten rejected from 16, came down to that support, and then just continued to get, you know, pummeled to the downside. But that didn't happen. The price at least did start to go sideways at that level. So, like I said, if you want to look at the glasses half full, uh, you know, I'd, I'd, you know, look at it like that. So, point here being moving forward, $15.20, still that, uh, you know, near term level of support. You have that 50 period moving average being the resistance. But again, just because the price breaks above there, as I talked about, you still got that $16 mark that's become very annoying and stubborn uh, but overall those will be the main levels to watch next week next one sndl and i wanted to quickly do this one because i talked about this in the previous uh video and how you know this had just been stuck in this sideways channel and it was a, a question of you know who's ultimately going to win out and did i necessarily know that we were going to get an answer the very next day no i didn't know that but we did get an answer today and the bears went out and went out in a big way so you can see their price broke to the bottom of the channel and is now I made a, a relatively big move down. Uh, sure, it's quote unquote only three cents, but three cents on a, a penny stock adds up pretty quickly. So the first update, actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and do some house cleaning and get rid of that line. Uh, it served its purpose for now, but the first key update comes about based on a foundational rule in charting, which states when levels of support are broken and closed below, they tend to act as resistance. So if there is any sort of attempted bounce back in the upwards direction, then the big question mark and the big level to watch will be that 50 cent mark on whether or not the price, uh, you know, first off, of course, can the price even get back up to that level? And if it does, can it close up above it and make some progress through it? As far as next potential areas of support, got to squeeze things down here because as you're seeing, uh, been quite a while since the price has been down around this area of the chart. Uh, but the next key level of support now would be right down there around that 40... Yeah, 46 cent mark. Uh, so overall though, uh, disappointing way to end the week, broke down through that area, picked up a lot of downside pressure. So we'll see if that pressure continues into Monday. Next one, AAPL, Apple had earnings and started off the day very, very impressively. That opening 30 minutes, big, huge green candle. I'm just noticing this, but then after that opening 30 minutes, I don't think there's another single green candle. Maybe that one was green if I look closely enough, maybe that one. But wow, I'm just noticing that. So in other words, after the first 30 minutes, uh, it was bearish the remainder of the day, which now brings about a couple of interesting levels. And the main level gonna be right down here at this 156 mark. Uh, so let me be very clear. I'm not trying to impress you and imply that 156 is some great discovery on my part or that I have a special skill. I assure you a lot of people have noticed this area because the price has bounced off this level before. And I bring all that up back to the whole idea of a self-fulfilling prophecy. So if the price comes down to 156, does that mean that for sure guaranteed it is bouncing? No, of course not. I'm just saying that is it at least valid? Is it at least a plausible thought process to have? And it absolutely is, given that it's already happened two times before. Again, does that mean that it'll happen for a third time? Absolutely not. But is it at least rational to think that way? Yes, it is. So 156 is going to be a level that I think a lot of people will be watching next week. With any sort of uh, bigger bounces, key level of resistance to watch is going to be that pink line, the famous 200 period moving average. And there's a good example of why it's famous. That's right where the price essentially got rejected from today. Uh, but the more you know, pressing issue, or I should say the more kind of interesting dynamic here is all about 156 and whether or not the price can stay above it or not. Next one, HOOD, Robinhood here. And a just bonkers looking chart. I mean, did have earnings, opening 30 minutes, big gap down, huge candle. And then did pull back, not nearly as bad as Apple, but uh, a, a very unique looking chart here. And once again, going back to the whole idea of self-fulfilling prophecies, there's gonna be a lot, bunch of people that have drawn that trot line and saying, okay, this is a, a pretty steep pullback here. But because of this, it, you know, this quote unquote being the 30 minute big green candle right there, that, that does just kind of add a very unique flavor to this chart. And that's the whole idea of a watch list is finding unique situations and find, finding situations that catch your eye and then, well, watching them. And then you watch to see if they behave in a way that's going to allow you to, to formulate a trade plan based on whatever your strategy is. And in my mind, this is a very unique looking chart, a very unique kind of premise here. And with that tread line there, it's one that a lot of others I, I would think have drawn. So there can be that 
uh, you know, potential self-fulfilling prophecy uh, attribute of things. If the price does continue on down, then the level of support that stands out to me most right down there around $9.35. But yeah, if this thing can, uh, you know, get back up through that trend line, uh, you know, in my mind, it seems reasonable to think at least that that could create uh, some nice little upwards momentum. So let's see what happens with it. Next one here, FNCH, and there is no doubt about it, a very, very ugly looking chart. I mean, true story, there were people that were buying up here this morning. So hopefully those people had stop losses. And if they didn't, then they're not gonna have a very good weekend. Uh, but as I've said in past videos, there can be opportunity in the ugly. And that just assumes that you're a disciplined trader, you can honor stop losses and all that. And the reason I say that is the price is sitting basically right at this very interesting level. Could go down a little bit more and I'm gonna call it 230. Uh, but it's still at that purple line right now. And of course, power of charts bouncing slightly off that level. But what I'm wondering is if the price comes down here a bit more, can you get some sort of bounce around that 230 mark? No, you might not. Maybe it just comes down there and keeps on crashing. Hence the importance of risk management. But from a risk versus reward standpoint, you can formulate yourself a very valid, very logical thought process if this thing gets a bit more ugly. Now, to be fair, maybe you're saying, no, Clay, this thing is already ugly enough. I'll, I'd want to try to play it right off that 50 period moving average. And I, I can see your logic there too. But the whole idea here is that this thing is very ugly. But the, the thing is, lots of times when things look completely ugly, they look like a train wreck, that's when prices can all of a sudden just start to turn around, which again, doesn't mean that this one is you know ugly enough yet, uh, but it's worth at least keeping an eye on if you do like to play these sort of quote unquote ugly looking charts, especially down in this price range. And if you do, well then keep an eye on it. Next one here is ZYME and same general premise of what we just talked about, which is why I wanted to put them back to back so I can kind of speed through this one and I don't want to repeat myself, but you get the idea here, right? Big gap up, poor souls were buying up there and not just been pulling back, pulling back, pulling back. So it really just becomes a question. Now, is this one as ugly? I wouldn't say that, but it is still looking pretty ugly from the open. But, you know, where's an interesting level at? Once again, assuming you can be a disciplined trader. Let me squeeze this down here a bit. Yeah, right. They're at six, five dollars and sixty-five cents. Uh, another interesting level. So if you like to play these ugly charts that are pulling back, where you think, okay, I think right there is when everybody's going to capitulate, give up, wave the white flag. That's where I want to be getting in at. In my mind, five sixty-five is a very valid area for that. But I don't know. Maybe maybe that's not ugly enough, and this thing needs to keep on going down. So that's why risk management needs to be at the forefront of any sort of trading strategy. Next one, TSLA Tesla, uh, my favorite one to always keep an eye on. And like, uh, well, I mean, a lot of the stocks out there, especially the NASDAQ stocks, started off very strong. It wasn't as bad as Apple. At least there was a couple of green candles along the way. But you can see it's just been a slow and steady bleed the rest of the day. And what I'm, you know, my personal, uh, you know, kind of point of interest next week is going to be this 850 mark, which I talked about in past videos. Uh, now, it's still got a ways to go. Uh, and so it'll be interesting to see what develops over the weekend, see if there's any catalyst that would suggest that this, you know, bearish momentum is going to continue. Uh, but if it does, then like I said, I think a lot of people will be watching 850 as either a potential bounce point or as an area uh, to potentially go short as you know, that would be a leading indicator of that much more bearishness to come. But from kind of a pullback support area, 850 gonna be a level that a lot of people will be watching. And then just from a you know, potential reversal and breakout standpoint, I'm, I'm quite confident that a lot of people have drawn that trend line because it kind of stands out like a sore thumb. Um, so again, you know, I started and I'll end with this. There's no such thing as a guarantee. So I'm not saying that if Tesla pushes up through that level, then for sure guarantee there's gonna be a big move to the upside. But my point is that's a very valid, that's a plausible thought process to have. And you know, by no means is that some sort of random area on the chart. But like I said, for me, the most interesting dynamic here is let's see if 850 comes into play. And if it does, let's see how the price behaves and then potentially formulate some trade plans around it. So that wraps up the top 10. Again, if you like what you saw here and you wanna learn more about this tool and how it can, how it should be used to help build consistency as a trader, then definitely get signed up for that free class next week. It'll be Thursday, May 5th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So I hope to see you there. As far as these top 10 videos are concerned, if you enjoy this format, if you'd like for me to continue to put in the time and effort to create this sort of content, then please let me know by doing two easy things. Hit the like button, leave a simple co comment. Even if it's saying hi, tell me what you traded today. Tell me what you're watching next week. But hitting the like button, leaving a basic comment, really helped me out, not only with the channel, but just communicate to me that you enjoyed these videos. And like I said, as long as I know people are enjoying, I will continue to put in the time and effort to put these videos together. So definitely get signed up for that free class next week. Hopefully everybody had a good week. Have a good weekend and I'll see you back on Monday.